Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express. And in this new series, we're going to start a very interesting and a very important topic in the cloud, and this is security in the cloud. And the best way to start it is by explaining this very important concept. And this is what we call the shared responsibility model. So if I want to ask this question, the security responsibility, is it the responsibility of AWS or is it the responsibility of customers in their configuration or actually it is shared between AWS and between customers? So with this, let's start by explaining the shared responsibility model. And with this word here, shared responsibility model, now we can understand there are some parts, the complete responsibility of AWS and some other parts, the complete responsibility of customers. With this, let's get started. And let's start with the AWS part. What exactly are the parts AWS is responsible for? And here there is a keyword. So the keyword here, AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud. So AWS is responsible for the physical security of the cloud, the physical security of the regions, of the availability zones, of the edge locations the physical entry and access to these data centers. So no one can do and can cause any harm to my physical servers, my storage, my networking. And AWS is responsible for protecting the infrastructure that runs all the services offered in the AWS cloud. In short, AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud and that's the key word here but then next what about customers customers as well from the other side they are responsible for security inside the cloud so customers are responsible to secure their data inside the cloud so what does that mean let me give you some examples the first example here is if you remember when we talked about networking security, we defined two very important services. We spoke about something called network access control list and something called the security group. I'll put the link here if you don't uh, remember these two important services. But in short, network access list and security groups, they were like firewalls. So customers, they need to configure what kind of rules, what kind of traffic, do I want to permit? What kind of traffic do I want to deny? And I specify this in the network access list and in my security groups. So now the question, what if one of the customers came maybe to my access list or to my security group and said this, permit IP any any. What does that mean? This means that this customer opened his entire infrastructure to any traffic that might come from the internet. So now, if this customer got attacked, now who's responsible here? Definitely, this is a customer responsibility because customers, they know exactly their applications and their networking requirements. And accordingly, they need to specify which traffic to be allowed, which traffic to be denied. Let me give you another example. If one of the customers put his database in a public subnet. It should never be the case. The databases should always be protected and should always be put in a private subnet. So no one can access this database from outside. They need first to log into the web server and then the web server communicates with my database. If one of the customers put their database in a public subnet, what will happen here? Now they exposed their database to the complete internet and that's definitely a security breach. Another example, because here I want to highlight maybe a question that will come to the exam. Now, who is responsible to patch the EC2 operating systems? So if you remember the EC2, this was my virtual server that I provision 
on the AWS cloud. So if you provision an EC2 instance, this is a self-provisioned virtual server like this. It comes with an operating system. And this is definitely your responsibility to patch this operating system to make sure that this EC2 instance is not vulnerable, for example. But let me tell you another question here. What about patching operating systems on RDS instances? If you remember RDS instances, this is the fully managed database offerings from AWS. And if you remember the RDS, was very simply an EC2 instance, but if you remember, you didn't create this EC2. AWS automatically created this EC2 instance completely on your behalf, and because you did not create this instance, also you don't have access to the operating system. So now, who has access to the operating system and who can update the operating system, now this is AWS and this is not you. So very important here to understand because it might be a question in your exam. Now, who's responsible according to the shared responsibility model to patch the operating system of my EC2? In this case, this is definitely the customers. But who's responsible to patch the operating system on RDS instances, yes, this is definitely AWS. So very, very important to understand here, where is the limitation? I need to understand according to the service that I am consuming. Very good. With this, we come to the end of this session. A very important concept, the shared responsibility model. And again, let me brief. AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, the physical security of data centers, regions, availability zones, but customers are responsible for the security inside the cloud. And we spoke about many examples like configuring network access control list, security groups, like for example, protecting uh, important assets like databases and putting them in a private subnet, as well as the concept of patching the operating system, definitely this is a customer responsibility. So I hope the concept is clear. If anyone has any question, please put for us the questions on the chat. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.